Two of the most important influences in our world today are science and religion. And so the question is, how do these two areas relate to each other? And I'm joined today by Dr. A.J. Roberts, who is a virologist, a molecular biologist, and a Christian who's going to help unpack this. And I know you've given a lot of thought to these questions about relationships between science and Christianity. And of course, we're following in the footsteps of Ian Barber, who basically argued there were four models for the relationship between science and religion. A conflict model, an independence model, a dialogue model, and then an integration model. And today we're going to focus on a dialogue model for the relationship between science and religion. So could you tell me briefly what is the dialogue model? So Ian Barber describes the dialogue model as an indirect interaction between science and religion or Christianity. And what he means by that is that there are ways that they relate to each other that aren't directly affecting the other one. Uh, and they do this through shared methodologies. Both science and theology collect data and interpret the data and build a model and they try to fit that model to reality. So that would be one mechanism of a shared methodology between the two. Another is that they both employ something called abductive reasoning or reasoning to the best explanation. When you can't prove something experimentally or you can't reproduce something uh, scientifically, uh, we use something called abductive reasoning. And that's, that's basically taking the most evidence around us, finding the best fit, the most plausible fit, with the least imagination necessary, and one that actually helps us understand other aspects of reality. So that would be another shared methodology between the two. But he also sees the two relating in something he calls boundary questions. And boundary questions are those kinds of questions that science raises, but can't answer itself. Questions like, why is the universe comprehensible? Why is there order in the universe? Uh, why is the universe so finely tuned? Why do uh, human beings cognizant, aware, reasoning uh, entities exist in the universe? Why are there people that can even ask questions about why the universe is? So these are questions that science would raise but can't answer. And yet theology or philosophy answer these questions head on. Now, um, it seems like a very reasonable approach to think about in terms of the relationship between science and religion. What is your assessment of the dialogue approach? I actually think that the dialogue approach is not something that stands alone. I think it's, it's something that um, is, is often appealed to even from people who hold to an independence position because there has to be a way to relate science and religion when they start to hit uh, similar topics or similar uh, realms of understanding or knowledge like natural history uh, or creation or things to these extents. And, and when, when they touch on things that are similar, you have to at least have dialogue if you're not seeking the fourth model, which is integration. And so I think dialogue is something that's employed not on its own merit, but I think it's employed in conjunction with some other model, either independence or integration. 